This was a real test conducted in 2020 when GPT-3 model first came out. The technology since then has come a long, long way, and ChatGPT is an amazing example of that. We are yet to see if this AI technology can actually replace therapists, but as a data note, you might be wondering, can ChatGPT and AI in general replace jobs like data analysts and data scientists? So in today's video, we are going to be talking about what ChatGPT actually is under the hood, how can we use it for data science? Science, what's good and what's not so good about using such AI system for data science. So without further ado, let's get started. As you might already know, ChatGPT is a large language model created by OpenAI, which is trained to carry on dialogue. It can respond to user input in a conversation and perform numerous language tasks, if not any language tasks, including text summarization and language translation. How do you say, how are you in Vietnamese? How are you can be translated to Bạn có khỏe không in Vietnamese? It is pretty good. It can help you write code from your instruction or help you rewrite your dating profile and many, many more. And the best part is it didn't actually encourage me to commit suicide when I brought up this question. So how did ChatGPT achieve this? Let's go all the way back to 2017. In 2017, a paper from Google called Attention is All You Need first introduced a network architecture called the Transformer. This network architecture is solely based on attention mechanisms. It took much less time to train and it outperformed the best models back then both in terms of speed and performance. It quickly replaced the once popular recurrent neural network and convolutional neural network architectures in several deep learning tasks. In 2018, the first pre-trained transformer model, GPT, was introduced. And within just two years, several state-of-the-art transformer models were created and the number of parameters in those models keep growing exponentially. But there are some problems, serious problems with these models. They don't always align very well with human expectations. Sometimes they don't follow user intentions, sometimes they hallucinate or make up wrong facts, or worse yet, they can generate biased or toxic output. This is what experts call human AI misalignment issue. Although ChatGPT is also built on top of GPT, the difference is that it also uses reinforcement learning from human feedback, with an aim to make this AI model more truthful and less toxic. The model is trained and fine-tuned through a couple of steps. In the supervised step, AI trainers have a conversation with the AI model and provide responses to demonstrate the desired output behavior. After the model is first trained, in the next step, a sample of the model outputs will ranked from best to worst by the AI trainers. And these scores would be used to train a reward model that can later calculate the reward for all the model outputs. Using this reward model, in the last step, the ChatGPT model get fine-tuned using a reinforcement learning algorithm. This reinforcement learning process trains model to give a better response and hence align better with human expectations. Although ChatGPT is one of the most powerful language models to date, and I have to admit that its English is perhaps much better than mine, it still has many limitations. OpenAI described them very clearly on its website. Besides that, there are also more deep-rooted concerns about using AI models as an all-knowing AI system. The most important one is perhaps the question, do language models actually understand meaning in language? No matter how many parameters a language model has, it's unclear if it actually understands definitions and abstract concepts. A paper by a group of Stanford researchers found that pre-trained language models make mistakes at least 20% of the time, struggling to distinguish words from the antonyms and understand abstract definitions. We've also seen this lack of robustness in ChatGPT when we often need to tweak the question slightly to get the answer we want. To see what ChatGPT brings to a table in data science area, I asked ChatGPT a few questions to see if it can actually replace a mediocre data scientist that's me. All of the questions are based on real-world situations I've encountered in my data science job. The first question is, I'm wondering if ChatGPT can give me a roadmap for 
learning Python for data science as a beginner. And I want to also have a weekly schedule and the resource links as well. Let's see. Okay, we do have a roadmap here. So we have week one, learn basics of Python, though we have some resource links. This is really nice. So if someone wants to start with Python, you can definitely use ChatGPT to perhaps have a rough idea of what are the things that you need to learn. As you can see, this is a very general roadmap, but um, yeah, it is a very good starting point. In the next question, I want to ask something about statistics. You work as a data scientist. What are the methods? to compare two distribution. So if you work with data, sometimes you might want to check the distribution of a sample. ChatGPT suggests us that we can do visualization, plotting the distributions, summary statistics. We also have two sample t-tests and we have KS test. We have KL divergence and some other <laughs> methods I've never heard about was sustained distance. Okay, I don't know about this test. So although I think this answer might not be complete, I think it's a, it's a very good summary of what kind of tests you can do. Moving on to the next question, I want to ask a little bit more practical question. How do you detect anomalies and outliers in a data set? Let's see what comes out. It's a super general answer. Let me try to ask, how do you detect outliers or anomalies using clustering? Okay, at first sight, the answer sounds great. It gives me four steps for detecting anomalies using clustering. So firstly, pre-processing the data, then clustering using some sort of algorithm, and then we identify outliers and then evaluate the results, which sounds pretty sensible. However, it also goes on to say that it's important to note that clustering methods require the number of clusters to be specified in advance, which is simply not true. Clustering methods like hierarchical clustering don't require you to specify the number of clusters in advance. So this answer is a great start, but it's partly wrong. The next question is a coding question. So I'm going to ask something like, you have a customer risk data set. Can you write Python code for visualizing customer income distribution per default status? I'm really curious just to try out some code here and see if it actually works. So I'm gonna try this code out. So I have downloaded this data set here and I have my JupyterLab open. So I can just paste the code here. I'm gonna just uh, rearrange the code a little bit here. I need to import the data set first. BD read CSV. Oh, I need to change the column name. That would be person income. And this is CB person default on file. Oops, we have some error. Group by default. I need to change this as well. This is my fault. Okay, it actually works, but this looks pretty terrible. You can see that there's some outliers here in the data set, so we cannot really see much uh, from this histogram. So yeah, to be able to get some insight from this, I think we'll need to tweak the code a little bit. So I asked the next question to ask ChatGPT to remove the outliers from the income in the visualization. So here's the updated code. Let me try this. Maybe I should just change the column names in the data set so that I don't have to change the code too much. Now I can run this code, hopefully. Oh, this works much better. So I can see that it has defined the lower bound and the upper bound of the income column based on the 5% uh, and 95% quantile. And it only visualizes the data points that are within this uh, bounds. So I think we can definitely use this code in our exploratory data analysis. So as you can see, it's really important to know how to ask the right question. And to be able to ask the right question, I think we still need to have some sort of knowledge and skills and expertise to be able to instruct or direct the question to the most desirable outcome. In our next question, I'm going to ask a machine learning question. I have trained an XGBoost model and I would like to explain the model output using a series of plots with Shab. Please write the code. Okay, 
it assumes that we have trained a model here. We also have load the data for the test data and then use the sharp library to create some plots. So this sounds familiar and I think that we can actually use uh, some of these functions. We probably have to customize the plots a little bit to get the right visual, but I think it's a pretty good generic code to start with. So in the next question, I want to ask something a bit more high level. I'm curious if ChatGPT can help me with the Witcher network analysis project that I did earlier on my channel. Can you write Python code for social network analysis of the characters in the Witcher book series? I'm sorry, I'm not able to write code for social network analysis because it would require knowledge of the characters and relationships that I don't have. So it gives me a few steps. First, we need to collect the data. It suggests me to gather information, maybe by reading the books or by using online resources such as Wikipedia. And we need to prepare a data, create network graph using libraries such as Network X, which is a very good uh, suggestion. I want to try out this code as well, and it actually works. We have Geralt in the center and we have the four other main characters here, which is pretty cool. So I believe that if I just keep asking really specific questions on how to do each of these steps, I can get some decent information from this. All in all, I'm pretty impressed and I can see a lot of potential in using AI firstly to speed up your research and prototyping. You can also use it to quickly learn how to use a new library and get help with common coding problems. For example, I can now create a pretty plot with much less time and focus my time and energy on more important things. It can surely make our job more enjoyable and less frustrating. Like if I come across a function written by someone else that I don't understand, I can ask ChatGPT to explain that function for me. It can help me quickly document my code, which is perhaps my least favorite task. Also, we can see that this AI AI model is more helpful with particular tasks rather than a whole process. So yeah, we're not reaching singularity yet. If I ask it to come up with a grand plan for a new project, it can struggle to give me a meaningful answer. But if I ask it exactly how to code this or how to do this in more detail, it works wonderfully. It's pretty understandable because data science is a complex field that requires a combination of different skills from technical skills, domain knowledge, problem solving and critical thinking, all of which are difficult to fully automate. I think this can be a perfect collaboration between data scientists and AI. We as humans will oversight the bigger picture, focus on asking the right questions and making decisions, while AI assists us to speed up the process of figuring out the technical details. So I think a tool like ChatGPT can help us perform our job better, faster, and in a more enjoyable way. Despite this large language models becoming more and more convincing, we need to be aware of a few things if we decide to use it for data science. As we talked about earlier, ChatGPT is partly trained on the input from the AI trainers. So the model outcome is inevitably biased towards the preferences of the trainers. This means we need to be critical and take the answers with a grain of salt. Especially in data science, we might work with sensitive topics and we are the ones who design the metrics and the models we need to be extra careful. In addition, some information in the answers might be incorrect. As we've seen earlier in one of the questions, that means we still need to have the expertise and the right foundation in statistics, math, and domain knowledge to be able to recognize the potential issues or silly mistakes. We still need the ability to judge if the answer is good or good enough, no matter how convincing it might sound. Also, code generated by AI is not guaranteed to be working one Many people have pointed out that the code can also be quite inefficient even if it's not theoretically wrong. So data science practitioners like us are still much responsible for selecting, testing, and optimizing the solutions. There is no doubt that ChatGPT and similar models will get more fine-tuned and become more perfect, but there's another concern the phenomenon of de-skilling. De-skilling is a process by which skilled labor within an industry or economy is eliminated by the introduction of technologies operated by semi or unskilled workers. If anyone without any skills can create AI art, build machine learning models, or create a great website with ChatGPT, we might decide not to even bother learning the basic skills in the first place. This is what happened in the aviation industry. Commercial 
commercial aircraft nowadays fly on autopilot for much of the time. Some people put it this way. Once you put pilots on automation, their manual abilities degrade and the flight path awareness is doubt. Flying becomes a monitoring task, an abstraction on a screen, a mind-numbing wait for the next hotel. So when emergency or unexpected situation happens, pilots might not have enough skills and experience to take over the computer. This is believed to be the reason for the tragic crash of the flight AF447 in 2009, which killed all 228 people on board. The adverse weather condition caused automatic pilot functions to stop working and experts believe the pilots were not adequately trained for manually flying the airplane, leading to a series of fatal mistakes. In any industry, it would be very dangerous if our critical thinking and judgment capability is deteriorated by overly relying on an AI system. We might not even trust our own judgment when we need to because the AI system is simply too compelling. I generally believe we should learn to do something ourselves first and develop the experience and own judgment before using any AI system to help with the task. If you've never built a machine learning model by yourself, you'd better not trust ChatGPT to build it for you. Companies, including my employer, are still not allowing the use of ChatGPT yet. This is mostly because of concerns about sharing client data and intellectual property. But as Microsoft is pouring $10 billion into OpenAI and planning to integrate OpenAI's models into its consumer and enterprise products, I guess it's just a matter of time and the question of how the human AI collaboration will play out in the business setting. Another thing I think is worth mentioning is that an advanced AI model like ChatGPT still can't come up with new creative ideas and concepts, at least not yet. Just like we haven't seen DALI 2 or Stable Diffusion be able to come up with its own art style, ChatGPT can't come up with a novel idea in an abstract way. So if we rely too heavily on such an AI model, we might run the risk of recycling old ideas over and over again without coming up with something new. So in short, I believe AI models like ChatGPT can be a great tool for data scientists for speeding up a specific task. However, at least in the near future, I don't think AI models can fully replace human expertise and judgment in data analysis, model building, interpretation, and decision making. That said, we never know if singularity is already near and we'll probably all be out of jobs sooner or later. But I'm actually fine with working less so that I can make more videos. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button just because it's created by a human. That's me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.